welcome back. This is the day for our CEO report with CEO Brad Hudson, and he is here with us today. Welcome, sir. Good morning. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here again. A lot of exciting things happen in the village. I'm happy to share them with you and, and our residents. Well, I'm ready to hear about this because I know we have a lot of things. This is the time of year to, to do a lot of improvements, especially outside. Right, right, particularly paving. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know, that really has to be done in the warm weather months, and so we are going at it pretty hot and heavy right now. Mm -hmm. I know it's disruptive for residents to, to have trouble accessing your manor or having to take a detour route to, uh, to get around, but we're doing a lot of paving and, and a lot of reconstruction and slurry seal uh, throughout the village. Mm -hmm. And to compound that, we have Edison out there redoing some of their infrastructure, particularly in the Gate 5-6 area. They're pulling a bunch of wire and trying to upgrade their facilities as well, because they're about as old as ours are. <laughs> and so uh, uh, we've got quite a bit of activity happening uh, out there. And, and you combine that with an aggressive uh, epoxy program, mm -hmm. a lot of dry rot work, tree trimming. There's a lot going on out there right now, so I just ask residents to uh, to be mindful that workers are out there, and as you're driving around, uh, uh, be careful, and, and we apologize for any inconvenience we cause, and, and appreciate the patience they have as we're disrupting their daily routine to hopefully make things better down the road. But the, the, the real upside is to do this kind of work and do it simultaneously really is a help, to have the tree trimming and the paving and have Edison out there with any kind of uh, retrofit that they have to do. It's great to do it at the same time. Well, yeah, we, we, we do like to, to try to coordinate this. We don't want to be in each other's way, mm -hmm. but if we can, we'd rather just disrupt residents once or twice instead of 10 times. Right. Um, though that's not always the case and, and, and things happen, I think uh, we do a pretty good job of letting residents know what's going on and, and to try to be responsive when they call with a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can always address any particular issue that an individual resident has uh, if they have to get out or they have to do something we'll make accommodation for them that's fantastic and i know last week you said you were driving around the community and you noticed the big satellite being installed for our broadband and for our cable right we saw some pictures of that it's it's uh -huh. in place now now we've got there's a couple of miles of wire that have to be hooked up <laughs> to that thing and so we're we're in the process uh, of doing that uh, and a lot of other uh, internet uh, upgrades. You know, we've talked about, you know, tripling bandwidth and getting better service for residents. That process is well underway. Mm -hmm. And as we're doing that, we've encountered a few challenges here and there. Oh, yes. Um, and so uh, there have been some outages. Residents may have noticed that. And, yes. and we try to be responsive and get out there and take care of those. Mm -hmm. But as you upgrade one piece, sometimes you break another piece. Everybody knows that as you do a renovation or an upgrade or a retrofit, the once once you start kind of getting in there and pulling things out and taking a look at them, you, you find a lot more work to be done. Yeah, now we've had that happen and, and uh, we've heard from residents who have uh, had some outages. Most of them have been fairly short. <laughs> um, but we've had, uh, we, there are a number of challenges with our aging infrastructure. This is one of the first communities certainly in the state, maybe the country, to actually do an underground uh, cable network, which was yes. upgraded several years, that was in the 60s. Yes. Upgraded later, uh, added some fiber optics in there. But this system is very, very old. It has had <laughs> very limited maintenance. And so as we're going in there and, and putting some more energy behind it, uh, we're breaking a few things, and so and we're fixing them. So I, I brought some shots along to <laughs> oh, kind of show you what we're running into out oh, there. So this wow, is a pretty that? typical cable box right here, and you can see the rusted connections <laughs> and twisted wires. This connection is is one of the oldest, uh, the older kinds of connections. Yeah, and you too. can see the box is sure. rusted out, so you're getting water penetration. I don't know who decided to put a sprinkler right right next oh, to a box. That's a sprinkler head. Yes, it's not a really oh, good yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, I suspect the sprinkler might have been there before the box, but I couldn't guarantee it. Okay. Um, so this is the kind of thing we run into. There are some 4,000 of these boxes out there. Oh, wow. And they all are mostly in that condition, though we've, over the last year or two, we've uh, been upgrading a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's a, that's the kind of challenge we run into most oh, of the time. Event. 
Yeah. So anything that got around here is being vented right into all these connections. But when residents call about cable or internet problems, yeah. this is the first place we go. Sure. Let's check the box. And, and most of the time, the problem is in the box or in the manor. Now here's, this is a, again, <laughs> this is actually kind of an upgraded box here on the left, but not really done wow. very well. And so we'll go through and take something like that uh -huh. and then make it look like that. So this is just a lot more streamlined, but yeah. then you, this looks like, well, I've had apartments where I've had to plug in too many things and it right. won't plug. So you can just kind of see it's just a mess. Yeah, it looks like maybe some residents went out there and bootlegged some free cable. We can't have that. No free cable here. Well, a little bit of free cable, <laughs> not too much. <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we're going back and, and upgrading those. And there's a lot of other kind of boxes we have out there as well. Um, we have vaults and we have the nodes and we have oh. a lot of here. This is we have a lot of telephone and irrigation boxes that look like this on the left. Gosh. Um, and so you can see that it's got the dirt inside and yeah, dirt I, I, God leaves, knows if, if that thing worked, but we replaced <laughs> this with this this high tech arrangement over there. We have mm -hmm. a lot of these out there, too. So we're just going through and upgrading now. If you just did this all at once, you'd probably it'd probably cost five or ten million dollars. Oh yeah, it'd be a really expensive endeavor just because there's so many of them. So what we're going, we're prioritizing air buildings and areas where we have the most complaints mm -hmm. and getting out there and tackling those. And if somebody calls and we find something like this, then we look all around that building and that neighborhood and yes. do all of them out there. Oh good, and yeah. Figuring that well, if one resident's having a problem, probably more are, <laughs> and so we'll just take care of that. Now Chuck's putting together a five-year program. Oh, this here, this is oh, uh, to, to address that's a all this stuff. Pool. Yeah, no, it's a that small pond. that's a vault where a lot of your cable and and fiber optic infrastructure and, come and together. And yes, it's and a, it, it's probably habitat now, so I'm not sure we can <laughs> fix that. We'll have to Sorry. get a federal permit. Probably. Um, but uh, yeah, this is. Uh, is really bad. We have a number of these vaults wow. in the community. They mostly look like that. And so we're going to be replacing and upgrading many of those. Actually, some of this work's already begun, but that's a- turn them into koi ponds. Perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. You can see that uh, uh, I guess we had some extra wire here and rather than doing a splice, we just put it in there. So oh. all of these vaults and, and nodes, those are kind of the priorities. Yes. Because those are, that's your backbone. Mm -hmm. So we're getting to that. And then we're we're getting onto the boxes on that manners. And again, there's there's many more of those. It's mm -hmm. really I say around four thousand of those boxes. Oh wow! Uh, most of them in pretty bad shape, and and usually uh, residents will call if they have a. Usually it's a, a cable or an internet issue, and mm -hmm. that leads us to to these boxes. And then we'll go ahead and take care of a whole neighborhood. Oh my! Now as if we didn't have enough of our problems. <laughs> on our own. <laughs> now, I don't know if this resident decided they wanted a new node or if uh, they knew it was a bad node, so they ran it over so it would replace it or it was an accident, but this happened Tuesday. So, oh my so while some of the outages you're experiencing are because you know we're doing work and upgrading and uh, again, those will be pretty short term. We have a lot of this too, where where a box gets gets hit, and uh, and so we have a major replacement initiative that we have to undertake here. This happened Tuesday, oh my. and I'm, it affected a number of of residents, uh, and so we were able to get that up and running. I think it took us about three or four hours to replace that, which isn't bad for that no. kind of a catastrophic event, sure. um, but uh, residents called and, and I know that West Coast was overwhelmed with the number of calls that came in and, and plus we were doing some things too that generated some traffic mm -hmm. and so sometimes when you have two or three of these things happen at the same time you just can't have enough staff there to handle it. <laughs> um, and so uh, that's an ongoing effort. It's going to take many, many years to, to get this perfect. but very soon yes. it's going to be much better um, with the new satellite dish that we looked at last week right, right. Um, uh, with uh, the new lasers that have been installed and are really generating a lot more bandwidth and then these upgrades particularly to the nodes uh, and the vaults mm -hmm. we can do that pretty quickly mm -hmm. um, the boxes just be a long-term effort That's to right. get through that and, and to get those squared away and if residents have any problems give us a call we'll come clean them up uh, there's no problem there. 
But so. it really, it, it, the foresight of the planners of this community back in the 60s to know that all of this cable, all of these wires need to be underground. Yeah, it was that very was advanced, yes. Very advanced and such a benefit, an aesthetic benefit, because we have all lived in Southern California communities that had the wires still going up to the roof line, and it's just crazy looking. For a, for a community of our age, mm -hmm. the outstanding aesthetics we, we have are largely due to the undergrounding uh, of this infrastructure, uh, which you're right, it was cutting edge back then, and the fact that uh, we planted so so many trees. Oh, and, that's true. <laughs> and we have some, you know, 35,000 little less trees in the community. Uh, many of them are just wonderful uh, specimens and, and, a, and a wide array uh, of species mm -hmm. uh, for our enjoyment. Uh, yeah, they're a lot of work and they drop a lot of material on the sidewalk and it irritates the heck out of a lot of residents, but think of life in the village without our beautiful trees. Uh, it, it really is a predominant, it may be the predominant feature of our village. And I've been lucky enough to see the pictures of this area before the development began. And it really was, it was just open ranch land. Right. There wasn't a shade tree to be found. And it's really, it's so beautiful. It's like a forest, but those trees do, they do take the maintenance and the root systems may sometimes impede some of the stuff that's happening underground or maybe not. Maybe the, the planning was such that it really it's just the maintenance of the trees. And we have tree trimming going on right now. A lot of tree trimming. Um, a lot of communities that have overhead infrastructure and a lot of trees, mm -hmm. I've managed a few communities like that, um, have a lot of outages yes. in everything. Yes. Uh, electric, cable, telephone, and we just don't have that. Even with the big storms we had last mm -hmm. year, and we lost a lot of trees, lost a lot of limbs, didn't affect any of your infrastructure because it's all underground. So while it's old and tired and it needs help, mm -hmm. um, I'm glad it's underground already. <laughs> yes. It's pretty easy to pull wire as opposed to taking overhead wire and trying to put it underground. Now that would be some real interruption to lifestyle, to traffic, uh, and, and very expensive as well. Yes, and yes. so all that work's been done. Uh, and, and the community aesthetics are far improved and, and we benefit so much from it. Um, that it yeah, and I'm happy to, to have the opportunity to upgrade some of these things and uh, we're excited about it. Big, big, big changes uh, okay. in, in cable, in internet, um, changes here at TV6. You know, we talk about the new set, the True. HD cameras, uh, you know, all the LED lights to provide, make us look a little bit better. Um, <laughs> and, and everything is, is going into, and new programming as well, is going into a, a full package of, of communication improvements for village residents. And, and it's pretty exciting uh, to, to be involved in that. And working with Dwelling Live, that's another part of that package as well being able to get that communication out to all residents. We're seeing a, a lot of growth uh, in Dwelling Live. A mm -hmm. lot of residents are deciding to, uh, to access uh, our gates for their, for their guests using the, the mobile application or the desktop application. Um, so we're, we're uh, experiencing quite a bit of activity there. I think I reported uh, we uh, bring in, we answer about 360,000 calls a year, telephone calls for gate access. And so if we could get that from 360,000 down to maybe 250,000, sure. that would save residents a lot of money in terms of the number of operators we have to have to answer those calls. Mm -hmm. And so I know I, I put the link out every couple of weeks for Dwelling Live mm -hmm. and how to download the app. And, and there's a little instructional video uh, that Chuck Holland did that's very nice. And so I'll send those out again tomorrow okay. so residents can, uh, can once again um, um, try to use the app. And, and, and it's really so much more efficient and it's better for you. You don't have to wait on hold. You, you don't have to, you know, you just do it at your convenience yourself. And as a bonus, when your guest arrives, you get a little text or an email that says your guest is coming through the gate. So it's really a, a high upgrade. And most communities uh, that have uh, the kind of gate access technology that we're deploying mm -hmm. use a dwelling live mechanism. It, it, it's state of the art. It's a best practice. Uh, it's the way to go for efficient and, and, and proper gate access technology. It's wonderful and, and getting in and around the village has always been uh, certainly enhanced by the bus system that we have. And we know that there is a, an event tomorrow by Friends of the Village and they're going to have the residents come in and talk about how to use the bus system. Well, we're making a lot of changes there. Uh -huh. 
Um, as most residents know, and certainly our gate ambassadors know, our, most of our buses are pretty empty. Right. And so we're making some major changes. Our bus ridership used to be over half a million rides a year. It'll be down under 200,000 this year. Wow. And so it has been on a steady decline for a long time. You know, folks don't use transit as mm -hmm. much as they used to. Uh, most families have two cars. Uh, if they don't want to drive, there's Uber and other opportunities. So just a lot of, a lot of challenges to a fixed route system that is so as robust as ours. So, so we're making some changes. We hope to provide much better service, more direct access. Instead of getting on a bus and driving around to get to your destination, you can call us up and we'll just take you there. True, and, and we were so, hearing yesterday that included in the new bus routes, they might be able to take residents out to the local malls and let them drop, drop them off so they can have lunch and a, and a film and watch a movie and then get back on the bus and come back. Well, we've added a lot of excursions, uh -huh. um, and so residents love that. I mean, they sell out in a matter, matter of hours. Right. Sell out. It's free. You call and sign up, they're done. <laughs> they reserve um, So out. it doesn't sell. They reserve <laughs> yeah. out very yeah. quickly. Yes. And so we know that's popular. And actually, our, that's when our buses get the most uses is mm -hmm. for these special events. Even special events in the village gener generate uh, a lot of bus usage. But if you just watch the, the buses going on their normal routes, they're fairly empty uh, for the most part. And so that uh, we've got to rectify that, uh, have a more efficient, better system. It's a very expensive uh, amenity. Uh, other than cable, uh, it's the second most expensive amenity that we have. Uh, and it's not utilized by very many village residents. And those being at the top of your priority list on the things to take a look at and streamline, right. I know that you're really keeping residents in mind. Well, we want to make it work better. Yes. We want more residents to be able to use, all of the residents are paying for it and only a few hundred are using it. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to develop a system that many, many more of our residents will utilize and find acceptable and will meet their needs. So we're trying to find that sweet spot that meets the needs of the current riders, mm -hmm. but also expands ridership to those who, who, who want a different kind of experience. And so we're exploring that. I know you've had, had Becky and others on your show and they've yes. talked about uh, the things we're trying to do. One of the things we're gonna, gonna roll out uh, pretty soon, and I think it's gonna be at the Mobility Committee shortly, is just going to all demand response on Sundays. Oh, wow. There's very little bus ridership on Sundays. It's our very slowest day mm -hmm. to run eight buses fixed route, mostly empty, uh -huh. around the village, out in the community, makes no sense. Right. And so we want to go ahead and move Sundays just to a demand response. If you need to go someplace, call us up, we'll take you. Um, much easier, much more efficient, mm -hmm. not a big diesel bus, you know, spewing emissions all around, noisy. <laughs> you know, we don't need that. A nice, quiet van taking oh, yes. you right to where you want to go. That yeah. Sounds like... To, to church, to temple, you know, wherever you have to go, we'll get you there. And that sounds like a, a great way to go forward. Well, yep. thank you, sir, for coming in today and giving us your report. Well, it's my pleasure. Uh, I've enjoyed coming here. Every, the studio's a little bit different every time I come. I know you're in, a, in the middle think? of a major. I love it. I love it. I think <laughs> it's much better, and I know there's more to come. And I'm very excited about the future of Village Television. Well, we are, too. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks for being here. Up next, we are going to have the Hogue Medical Foundation. Ken will be speaking to the president of the foundation right after this. Stay with us.